Here in Heswell's United Reformed Church, we have another organ built by the Liverpool company of Rushworth and Draper. It was made in 1966, and it came about at a time when there was a general uh, change in the focus of British organ building. People from different countries tend to speak different languages, and they tend to speak with individual accents. And it's the same way with pipe organs, that organs in uh, North Germany, for instance, look, sound, and have a very different style to that of uh, organs built for a, a French church. Equally, they sound different, look different, have a different style to organs built in, a, in an English cathedral. And in the 50s and the 60s, there was a move away from the, the English sound, the British sound, towards the continental sound. And this organ really typifies that, both in, in look and in sound. And in look, because at the console we have some unusual names that you might not expect. We've got crumhorns, we've got spitzflirters, and a block flirter. Um, but primarily, the tone of the organ sounds kind of more continental. The piece I've just played was by Louis Nicolas Clerombeau, who was a French composer organist who was uh, around the uh, late 1600s, early 1700s. And the sound that this organ produces, I think, goes absolutely hand in hand with the style and the sounds wanted and needed for this type of music. On a pipe organ, the sounds are created using the stops, and each one controls a set of pipes, and they each have a different sort of a sound. This organ differs from St. Peter's in the timbre of the pipes. It has flutes, it has strings, it has diapasons, which are normal organ sounds. But this is a more classical style of sound. It's a cleaner sound than the more romantic style of St. Peter's. One of the big physical differences for an organist is that we have to use our feet as well as our hands. We have a pedal board which has 30 or 32 notes, and the notes are in the same order as the keys. But it takes quite a lot of practice to know where to put your feet we kind of feel our way a little bit and it's, there's a bit of muscle memory. And as well as providing the real bass notes for the organ, we can play complete melodies on it as well. <laughs> an organ is an incredibly complicated mechanical machine and it really relies on wind, on air pressure, on air volume to work. But we have to keep that wind sealed. 
and the, uh, the thing that we use is actually leather. We use uh, mainly cow leather, but there's some sheep as well. And the smaller the moving part, the finer um, the leather has to be. It's, it's, it's slightly stretchy, it's, it's supple, but this is very thin, this is split skin. And then a slightly larger moving part might have a piece of leather like this, which again is, is quite, quite stretchy, but it's a little bit, uh, bit thicker. And then this is an example of, of bedding leather. And this is if we had a panel that was screwed flat that needed to be sealed. So this wouldn't actually be a moving part because it, it's quite tough. But it's, it's so much thicker than the others. Uh, and it's an absolute mainstay of an organ. Organ builders have tried to use other different materials over the years, uh, usually to try and save some money, but they've always returned to the old-fashioned ways, the old-fashioned materials, in this case, leather. And we can see inside the organ uh, how it works in practice. So here we are inside the organ itself in Heswell URC. And in front of us is the blower. This is the electrical fan that creates all the wind that the organ needs. The wind is regulated in this little controlled reservoir, passes through a wind trunk and through the wall. And here we are inside the organ chamber itself. And just in front is the swell box. So the swell is the upper keyboard. And these pipes are enclosed in a box. And we can just see the shutters at the front. And the organist can waggle his foot and close the shutters, open the shutters, which is a bit like a volume control. The pipes range from well, a fraction of an inch, really, the smaller the pipe, the higher the pitch. So these are very small squeaky sounds. And then the bigger the pipes, the deeper the sound. And these ones are eight foot long. The pipes sit on a soundboard, which has the valves and the mechanisms that open the, the, uh, the wind to each pipe when you press a key. The mouths on these pipes have beards, that little tube across the mouth. And it's to do with creating the tone. The shape of the pipe is quite important to the tone the pipe produces. A wide, dare I say, fat tubby pipe will produce a wide, fat tubby sound. And a very narrow, a thin scale pipe will produce a thinner sound. Quite often organs are a bit awkward to access. This one isn't too bad, to be fair, but there is a, a vertical ladder before coming. Once you're in the chamber, um, there's, there's quite a bit of space to move around.